Your family is very important to you. They bring you so much joy, laughter, fun, smiles, and love. If an unfortunate event occurred in your family, are you certain that they will be financially covered? Stress no more. Call and receive your free consultation today. And let's protect your family together. How my journey began. It's graduation time. Family is very important to me, including my puppies. The Marine Corps played a huge role in my life and allowed me to be ambitious, inspiring, a mentor, and achieve all of my goals. As a financial expert, I've received multiple awards, done various events as a guest speaker all over the U.S. with my platform of creating healthy financial habits, along with having my own business, all leading up to my show. Come along for the journey. Hello, gems, and welcome. For our last episode in July, we will be talking about extreme obsessions of the health and beauty industry. These are the extreme habits of some people that we'll be discussing. Here are a few statistics on obsessions pertaining to the health and beauty industry. Studies by the National Center for Health Statistics in 2018 estimate about 1.5% of the population is underweight. Roughly about 1.8% of women are underweight and about 1.2% of men are underweight. You are considered skinny or underweight if you have thin skin with little or no visible fat underneath or when you notice that your skin is thinner than normal or seems like you can feel your bones just right under the skin. You are probably becoming too skinny or just getting to that stage. More than one third of adults in the United States are obese. This is roughly 36.5% of adults who are obese and another 32.5% of adults who are overweight. A BMI, short for body mass index of 25 to 29.9 is considered overweight. A BMI of 30 and above is considered obese. Extreme dieting can be dangerous. Yo-yo dieting is defined as repetitive cycles of gaining, losing, and regaining weight. These have been shown to have negative effects, health effects, including increased risk of, of heart disease, long-lasting negative impacts on metabolism, just to name a few health risks. Dieting forces your body into starvation mode due to lack of proper nutrition and calorie intake, which can be harmful. The riskiest cosmetic surgery is the Brazilian butt lift. According to the British Association of Aesthetic Plastic Surgeons, or BAPS, Brazilian, Brazilian butt lifts have the highest rate of death for any aesthetic procedure, with as many as one in 3,000 patients dying as a result of the surgery. Other surgery complications can include, but not limited to, an unexpected reaction to anesthesia, infections, scarring, excessive bleeding, blood clots, and nerve damage. These are things to take in into consideration when looking to alter your body in one way or another. Now, Jim's for today's guest, his favorite fitness TV instructor was Richard Simmons. We all love a little Richard Simmons in our life. His favorite healthy vegetable and fruit to eat are mushrooms and watermelon. Very, very, very healthy. His favorite healthy snack is celery with cream cheese. Can't say I've tried that before, but it sounds super healthy. He was at his happiest ideal weight for himself, although other people viewed him as too skinny. There's that perception of how you feel as opposed to how people think you should look. His words of advice for our youth who are overly concerned about their body image is to learn to love yourself in the body that you are in and be healthy for yourself and no one else. All wonderful advice to live by. Gems, let's give a fierce fun facts. 
Welcome, <laughs> there you go, to my favorite uncle and your new favorite uncle, Scott, to the show. Welcome. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. So we have a lot of things to discuss today. So let's go ahead and get started. So our first topic we'll be discussing is there's such a thing as an image or an idea of being too skinny. Now, some dangers and risk of being skinny and underweight include malnutrition, vitamin deficiencies or anemia, osteoporosis from too little vitamin D and calcium in the body, decreased immune function, increased risk for complications during surgery, fertility issues caused by irregular menstrual cycles in women, and growth and development issues, especially in children and teenagers. So what are your thoughts about this obsession of too skinny, America's obsession? You know, a lot of people don't realize that there are even health risks to being too skinny. They're just so obsessed with being tiny yes. and there's all of this positive reinforcement to being skinny 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 and you know this is not always been how our society has been there used to be a time where you know being larger was considered what people wanted because it, it because it was about wealth and about prosperity but now it's all about skinny as being that is being what shows that you're healthy and wealthy and all of these good things. But the truth is that, you know, what is considered skinny is a lot of times really unhealthy. Yeah. Very, very much unhealthy. And speaking of unhealthy, um, you and I have talked about how the health and beauty industry glorifies being skinny. You know, the photoshopping, photo, photo scaping in and I'll take it out the blemishes. You know, a lot of these women specifically and men um, we're thinking with the Photoshopping and the airbrushing that this is them when really, no, they took off a few pounds over here, gave guys maybe even a chiseled um, six pack scrunch in, as they say, they snatched that waist for women. So what are your thoughts on the, all this obsession with airbrushing and Photoshopping? I think people need to be made aware that what you're seeing in these magazines a lot of times although some of that is changing, but very slowly, isn't even what the model looks like anymore. Yeah. One time I remember Cindy Crawford saying, I wish I looked like Cindy Crawford. Yes. Because she, because these magazines do so much airbrushing, they lengthen things, they stretch things, they take off part of what's there. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't look like what you're seeing. You're not, you're not even seeing a real person. Sometimes they don't even use real people in this digital imaging. Sometimes they create right. a body to be in these magazines. And you're not even looking at a person, you're looking from different parts from different photos. Right, and they're piecing it together to create this quote unquote beautiful image of what they think society views as beauty and what they want. And in the meantime, it's creating this trickle effect. So in order to get this super, super skinny look, you know, there's those dieting pills, smoothies, water diets, you know, we're constantly always being on a diet. I know there's a lot of women and men out there who are constantly on some type of diet. I know, I, I, I'm not gonna say I used to be one of them, I probably still am. One of them that I'm just like, what or diet? I've done, I've done everything. I have done everything. I teased you about that with the crazy diets where I'm like, are you on another diet? Are you on this diet? When are we gonna stop all of this dieting? I've had many friends where they've been on a diet, they've been on a constant diet, where they've been on the diet ever since they were joining. And I'm like, this needs to stop. You need to find a way to be happy with how you are or to find one healthy way of living that works for you. Yes, that definitely works for you. Not because there's a lot of times these diets are mass um, produced and it's not going to work with who you are, what you eat, what your allergies are and your daily activity, but we go on them anyways. You know, you pick whichever one you want. There's all kinds of smoothie diets, you've tried those, the juice diets, the fasting diets, all of these stuff, and really tea diets. Oh my gosh, tea, coffee, tea diet, coffee diet. And someone even told me there's an ice cream diet. I don't know how that one's supposed to work, but it's out there. And until you, yeah, right? <laughs> pick me, I wanna try that one. And people become obsessed with wanting to fit into, well, I need to be a size two. You know, a size two isn't a size two. 
the size two depends on the manufacturer that's making it. And they right. shrink sizes and they enlarge sizes and they just put a number on it. It's a number. It doesn't mean anything except that this is what the number, the industry that makes that makes whatever piece of clothing this is, that size. Right. And that you know that's so true. They did a documentary on on that with a size two is a size six in another brand. So who's making up these numbers? Who's deciding what you should look like based on that brand? And based on, um, so we're talking about the identity, let's talk, also talk about skinny shaming because, you know, we have this, it's a type of bullying that we've been, you know, shaming these women who are super, super skinny. Now, granted, there are some people who are super, super skinny and that's just their genetics. We're not talking about them, gyms. We're talking about the people who are limiting their intake of nutrition to get a certain image. And there's that slippery slope of body and skinny shaming that comes with that, that we definitely need to stop. Yes, because we don't know why someone is as thin as they are. They may naturally be that thin and that's just how their body is. They may be doing horrible things to themselves to keep that figure. They right. may be anorexic, they may be bulimic, they may be being shamed by their, by whoever, a coworker, a partner. Yep, significant they other, anyone. To look a certain way. And yeah, we have to keep that in mind. Surgeries and illness can have you lose weight. So be mindful to not body shame that. And since we're, we're talking about, is there a two skin? And we definitely have to do the polar opposite. Is there such a thing as too overweight, obese, or fat? And that word fat, I know some people might give me a lot of slack for it. I say because I've been called fat before. I've been called fat more, more than one occasion. So I use that because it's a term that is used. It's a very demeaning term, but it is a term that's used. And that's why I want to use it in this specific um, scenario. So what do we think about this? You, there are There is such thing as too skinny. Is there such thing as to obese. Obviously there is obese, there's health risk, but I've been called obese right now. And I'm like, are you serious? Me? Like, I, okay. But how do we feel about this? What are your thoughts on that? You know, here's the thing with this. I've been, I've been really skinny before. And there was a time when, when I was really skinny and I had started to gain weight, I was really concerned. And I went to the doctor because I felt I was gaining weight too fast. And nobody was worried about it. They were like, well, you're still thin. You're this or that. Don't worry about it. It's, it's just you gaining weight you need to gain. But then the moment I passed over that weight where you're, where you're suddenly overweight, any health issues I had, it was, well, it's because you're overweight. It's because you're obese. It's because you're this. It's because you're that. And the actual problem that I was having was a thyroid issue. But nobody was interested in that because now suddenly I'm overweight and it's all my fault. Yeah. And it, it was very unnerving for me to see how you get treated when you're thin and then how you get treated when suddenly you're overweight. Yeah, suddenly overweight. Definitely you have that. And your story is similar to a lot of stories out there in America. You know, when you're, you're super skinny, no one really blinks an eye. They're like, okay, the minute you do put on a few extra pounds, and we're not talking about 200 pounds or just a, a few, then all of a sudden, uh, what are you eating? What are you not eating? And, and all these concerns where they can still have the same concerns when you're quote unquote skinny. Yeah. Suddenly it was, I wasn't getting enough exercise. I was getting the same amount of exercise I was before, when I, when I, had, when I didn't have gain, when I hadn't gained the weight, but suddenly it was, you're not exercising. You're not this, you're not that. People make a lot of assumptions about people who are overweight that aren't necessarily true. Yes. And I wanted to talk on uh, about that. And then I'll share my story. We share these assumptions that they're just, um, they're lazy, that they're not working out. They don't know how to eat right. They're not drinking enough water. You know, they just don't care about themselves. And these things are so untrue. Just as someone who is classified as underweight or skinny can have any type of complications, your illnesses, there's certainly some medications that do cause you to gain weight. There's certain, any type of disorders, you know, that can cause you to gain weight. People can get depressed. Not everyone that gets depressed loses weight. Some people get depressed and have mental health issues that can cause weight gain. So until you fully understand these things, that harsh judgment is just so unnecessary. It really is. Stress can make people gain weight and stress can make it difficult to lose weight. And that's something that people don't think about either. 
that, you know, people who are trying to lose weight, they're under a lot of stress and it actually can stop you from losing weight no matter what you do. Yeah, because it puts that body into that protection mode of what's going on. I always say my body goes into that freeze mode of what are you doing? I don't know. Why are you not feeding us? And you're stressed and you're doing all this. We don't like you right now, Jewel. And it can prohibit you from losing weight. And the story that I wanted to share with our gyms is um, one of the, the pictures that's probably one of my most favorite per the gyms on Facebook is a picture of me in a bikini. And I had just lost just a few pounds. I, I, I think I lost like eight pounds at the time. And um, obviously, because I'm still in the Marine Corps and I was trying to obviously make my height and weight. And I remember saying, okay, you know, I look good, but I was still two pounds overweight for, you know, my weigh-in. And I remember thinking, you're getting, I'm getting all these accolades from, you know, Facebook friends and family. You look great. You look great. Your bikini. Oh my gosh, where are you going? And I remember thinking, I'm two pounds overweight. How am I going to get rid of these two pounds? And obviously, you know, quick diet, because here's the thing, you are two pounds and it's, you are overweight. There is no like catch oh, two, three pounds, we let it go. No. And for those of you who are familiar with the military taping system, no, I cannot tape out if I'm two pounds overweight because my body is still considered thin. You don't have the thick neck. I don't have the thick waist to actually do the proportions right for taping. So that wasn't going to work either. And I just remember the day of my weigh-in thinking, this is horrible. Like I lost this weight, but I still didn't lose enough. Like I remember being upset at myself that how come I can't lose these last two pounds? Like, what is it about these last two pounds that I just couldn't do? So um, like a lot of military people do, went on a quick diet, water, sauna, run, all that stuff. And, you know, basically you squeeze water, it's not weight, squeeze the water out so that I could make that type of height. But these are the things that we do to ourselves. And yes, the military is one thing and that's a completely whole different um, topic. But just to say like, the imagery, everyone else thought my body was great. And here I am, I'm like, man, I'm still not at my goal weight. I'm still nowhere near where I need to be for the military and life still sucks. And so with that, you know, I still want to talk about fat shaming because even, you know, I was at that weight, there were still people who I was still maybe a little too thick for. And I'm like, what do I got to do? <laughs> you can see, you can see my photo. I'm like, I... I don't know where else I need to lose. I told them, but there's all kinds of, you know, fat shaming like we talked about before with people who just are, are super mean. They just assume you just sit at home and eat a tub of ice cream every day with fried foods and French fries and you sit on the couch. So yeah, you know, those two experiences between yours and mine really cast a light on how other people, even in the medical profession, view you same person absolutely and and i want to be clear this is not everybody in the medical profession yeah. that i'm talking about it's just a few select people that i have dealt with where they have where they have basically fat changed and awesome. and it's it it can be very it can be very deflating yes it is very deflating and like i said these are just our experiences is not everyone in the healthcare from, um, community. This is not everyone in the military. These are just our truthful experiences. And speaking of the health community, our next one I want to talk about is extreme health. Because I said, hey, I had to squeeze out this two pounds in a short amount of time. So these extreme health. So these are the individuals who take healthy eating to the extreme and beyond. Their life has been obsessed with how they look and what they eat. So what are your thoughts on this? Because this is just more than just a lifestyle change. This is an extreme quick fix that never ends. You know how we talk about them in the grocery store and they're like, oh, I don't eat carbs. I haven't ate carbs in eight months because they're just not good. Mm, carbs are actually good for your body. So your thoughts on this? You know, there can be too much of one thing there can be too you, you can be too health conscious i really do believe that yes because your body is supposed to have a little bit of everything and if you don't have enough of certain things or you have too much of one thing it can cause you to have health problems and it can and it can become a problem because 
your life is supposed to be a lifestyle. You're supposed to have a life. Your your being healthy is supposed to be about having a lifestyle. There's supposed to be something that you're being you're that you're able to do every day and to be able to do it every day continuously. Right. Not you know one day you're supposed to have a lot of this, next day you're supposed to have a lot of that. That's going to make your body go off kilter. It's going to make you go off kilter. Right. And and just to the same, you know, anytime you exclude food groups. That's just generally not the healthiest way to go about this, you know. And I want to talk about that healthy look of perfection, you know, because some people just have this look of perfection. We talked about, you know, the airbrushing, that look of perfection. So when you're opening these magazines and you see that look and you look at what you have and you're like, I don't look anywhere near this, but this is what we ideally say is perfection then starts that snowball effect of, you know, I've known people that stay in the gym three times a day, going to the gyms, protein shakes, you know, pills, and all kinds of things just to maintain. I mean, I, I have known these people who too, haven't, haven't seen them eat like a regular meal with, with, you know, vegetables, a carb, and a protein. It's normally just protein, 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 and maybe a little bit of a carb, which is eggs or it's chicken, but not like a healthy meal. I've known people who don't eat fruit because fruits are sugary. And I'm like, so you want me to have a donut instead of like an apple? But I know people who refuse to eat fruit because they say it's just too sweet. And it's just that extremist. And sometimes that um, extreme view brings about judgment too. You know, we've talked about these people who are so judgy. Why are you eating that? Ooh, why do you have sauce on that? Why are you eating fried foods? Oh, that's not healthy for you. That's not this. Yeah. It's like, you know, a little bit of something ain't never going to hurt. You hear me? Ain't never going to hurt. So. <laughs> you said what? I'm going to have my chicken wing. Thank you. Now, I'm not saying we got to eat fried chicken every single day, but we can, you know, have that one meal where it's within reason. It's within reason and that's fine. And I, I think just sometimes for those healthy extreme people, it's just it's just too much. And you know, just being careful that you don't project that extreme healthy obsession with that perfection onto other people. Because people are always watching and I'm a big, big, big believer there's always someone watching you saying, well if they do it, then I want to do it. If that's what they say is the right thing to do, then I want to do it as well. So final thoughts on that. You're right. There's always someone paying attention to what you're doing. And if you're doing that extreme thing, then somebody else is going to do that extreme thing. And that's not necessarily going to work for them. No. And that, that can become a problem. Yes. And there's all kinds of health risks for that as well. When you do anything to the extreme. And so for our final topic, we're going to be talking about cosmetic surgery. So the ultimate obsession with youthfulness and that young look, maintaining that age and that certain look that you have of yourself. You know, I know people were like, I want to look 18. You're 43. I'm need for you to let that go. <laughs> but, there, you know, people have this obsession with the wrinkles and the you know, all of this stuff, is, the obsession with cosmetic surgery and how that can be dangerous. You know, I said in the beginning, the Brazilian butt lift is one of the most dangerous cosmetic surgeries that we have. But let's talk about this, the unwillingness of people, not just Americans, but around the world to not want to age gracefully and change to who you are going to be at age 62. Like, let's talk about that. You know, I've always had my thoughts about this because I'm not opposed to, to, to cosmetic surgery, as right. we know. However, I am, I do think that there is a point where it is just too much. It's too much. You know, there's, a, you know, having a little nip there, a little tuck there, a little, little pulling back, a little resurfacing, that, that's one thing. But when you're having so much skin pulled back that your eyebrows are moving, <laughs> we've seen it where your eyebrows are moving and you're not recognizable anymore and you're 40 and you're trying to look 18 or you're 60 and you're trying to look 22 that's that's not healthy it, it's not going to happen when you're trying to look like a barbie doll 
or you're trying to look completely like someone who's not yourself and you're having procedure after procedure after the procedure because there are people who are addicted to plastic surgery yes. and that's when it becomes when it becomes a little too much and it becomes too extreme and it can be and it can be dangerous yes it becomes dangerous like you said you every time you go under the knife you're altering what you look like and again yeah gems we're talking about extreme we're not talking about just a little bit here and there we're talking about you have spent over, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars of these cosmetic surgeries. You're, you're, you got a cosmetic surgery on your calendar right now and you haven't recovered from the last one. You're like, oh, wait a minute, what is this? Uh-uh, no, we need to get rid of that and then smooch that back here and push that. We're talking about the extreme addiction to that. Um, last point with this one is how young is too young for plastic surgery? So in the United States, there's no specific law preventing teenagers from getting cosmetic surgery. However, parental consent is required for patients under the age of 18 for that. And I want to say, what are we teaching our children under the age of 18 about image and self-esteem that you could have, you know, your 14-year-old, 12-year-old that says, mommy, I'm too fat, daddy, I'm too fat. Can we tug this a little bit? Or I can't get rid of this pooch. Or I've seen you do it. You know, what are we teaching them? I think that we're giving them the wrong lessons if we're having them have plastic surgery, that, excuse me, cosmetic surgery that young. Right. We're telling them that who they are is not good enough. We're telling them that they don't have a chance to grow and evolve. I mean, your body changes so much when you're an adolescent. How you look when you were 12, 13, even, even 16, 17 is not how you're going to look when you're 21, 22, 25, 26. You're going to look completely different. And what you're doing now is not what you're going to be doing later. You know, you may have this awkward stage now, but you're going to look great later. Fabulous. They're going to look fabulous. So I just, you know, just allow yourself to grow. Allow yourself just to go through those awkward stages because we all went through them. All went through them. All of us went through these, <laughs> these awkward stages and allowing yourself to go through this. So Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on all of these categories and these topics. Your view and opinions are definitely, definitely appreciated. Thank you very much. I was glad to share them. Thank you. All right, gems. It's time for your financial gems. Your financial gems for today are number one, budget for healthy foods and snacks. Because sometimes we recognize that these things can cost a lot. Budget for them. You know I'm a budget girl. You can budget too. Number two, consult with an RD, which is a registered dietitian, before starting a weight loss program and or a weight gain program. You'll be surprised at what, you, what they're able to tell you. Number three, quick fixes will not fix the underlying reason behind your weight. Find that why behind your weight gain or weight loss, and there you can unravel an even deeper reason for the things that you do. Number four, knowing the why behind your eating habits goes along with number three. You gotta know the why. Do you eat when you're excited? Do you eat when you're sad? Do you, do you eat when you're depressed? Do you eat out of anxiety? Knowing why you do or don't eat is key to gaining a better, healthier lifestyle pertaining to food. And finally, number five, find a good exercise routine that works for you. If you're not a runner, don't run. I, don't do it because you just gonna stop doing it eventually. Find an exercise routine that you enjoy doing and stick to it. All right, gems, it's our show custom to have every guest provide our gems with an inspirational quote. Favorite uncle, what is your personal inspirational quote you'd like to share with us today? Well, my inspirational quote this time is from someone who is unknown, but I really liked it, so I wanted to share it. Health is a state of complete harmony of the body, mind, and spirit. I love that. Complete, complete Mindfulness, I love that, love that, love that. It encompasses everything. You can't leave one one of them out. You gotta have all of them. Love it, love it, love it. Well, thank you for being my favorite uncle and a guest on our show today and being part of our journey. Thank you for having me. I always had a great time. Yes, we always have a fun, fun, fun time. I, Jim's, I hope we, we shed some light and shed some different... Um, advice and tips that you can take from us and incorporate them into your life. All right, gems, creating healthy financial habits is a lifelong commitment. Remember, without change, there be no butterflies. 
changing habits, changing lives, and changing futures are all up to you. Till next time, Jims. Take care. Bye-bye.